Hi friends, welcome to my channel, Temples of Jesus. If you are here for the first time, welcome. We're going to be reading from some of the Book of Mormon today, another Testament of Jesus Christ. We believe the Book of Mormon to be the word of God as far as it is, as long as it is translated correctly. And we also believe the Book of Mormon to be an, the word of God and another Testament of Jesus Christ over in the Americas, South and North America of peoples who were here around 600 BC to I think a couple hundred years um, AD. And, and so we're going to be reading from chapter six and we'll see how far we get. Um, if I'm a little bit pasty, I've been crying for a good long while now and I am not somebody who cries. But I think I'm all cried out and I feel better now. Um, share screen. I have a very beloved friend who I consider a grandfather who we have known for a, a couple years as we were converting back to our ward of hearing him share his testimony or give a talk and just had the utmost respect for him. He was a patriarch of our stake for, I believe, decades. He was a temple president of the Redlands California Temple with his sweet wife's sister, Morgan, who was the matron. And he was a temple sealer um, and we were hoping to be sealed as our family this past summer. And um, my husband is just not quite ready yet to go physically to the temple. However, he did go and support me during my endowment. And he also was able to give Jason his patriarchal blessing earlier this year where earlier this year in January and February, he was expected to only have a few more weeks left. And we had the great blessing of having him for another eight or nine months. So I just wanted to share a couple of these pictures. This is from I'm going to pull it over. Jason's patriarchal blessing, where we spent, I want to say, like two hours visiting ahead of time. And um, we had shared with Jason when he was done, he needed to sit down because he thinks that that was the, perhaps the longest blessing he's ever given anyone. And he's a patriarch who had given over 1,000 blessings. I think Jason was like 1,009. And he continued to give blessings up until, I think just until about two months ago in July. He had late stage cancer for quite a while. And Heavenly Father blessed him to to stay on the earth for a while longer to continue those blessings and to be a joy and light in our ward and stake and for his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And this was kind of the first time we all got to know each other in person. And it was such a wonderful visit with Patriarch Morgan and his sweet wife, Sister Morgan, that I just wanted to come and visit again. And so they welcomed that and I came and spent a couple hours at their house just coming over and visiting talking some things gospel and just getting to know each other and always giving hugs at church and he started to share with me um, so kindly that he considered me his granddaughter and he made that adamantly clear week after week that he considered me like his granddaughter and my children like his his great-grandchildren 
And so there was a really loving, sweet relationship there throughout this year, a great blessing, wonderful man. And so I feel happy that he is with Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. No doubt he is probably the most righteous man I've probably ever known in person who has passed. Um, and so that's a true honor and blessing. But I'm, I have been grieving as I've been playing hymns on the piano and just crying and crying. And my sweet, my sweet seven-year-old daughter is very sensitive and my kids loved him as well. And Sister Morgan and uh, um, my poor sweet seven-year-old was also just crying and crying. And I just felt comfort in, in playing some hymns while shedding many tears after going and praying to Heavenly Father for some comfort for his family. So uh, just wanted to share that. After getting to visit with him a little bit after the patriarchal blessing, I didn't have anyone from my family at all attend my endowment. Uh, no family members whatsoever. And so I had asked um, some really good friends, two, two sets of couples of very good friends who were supportive and God placed in our path for our conversion over the several years. And then because of the new relationship in the end of, I, this, uh, this was in the end of March, uh, my endowment. And so we had begun the start of that friendship from the end of July or maybe early February. And so I asked them if they'd be willing to come support me at my, my temple initiatorian endowment. And they were pleased to do that. And so this is a picture afterwards of them coming. And they're just such a joyful couple. And then I had the privilege to make friends with and sit with Sister Morgan and Relief Society each week or every other week. Um, and I took the kids over one time for them to play. And then he just had his birthday in the end of July, just two months ago. And this is just a couple of pictures from his birthday where some of his children were able to come. And it's just so incredibly joyful. And it was really with stage four um, for such a long time, quite, quite energetic and being definitely sustained. Uh, if that's the right word, and upheld by, by God to continue the work that he had at that time. And then I guess that he stopped having treatment, which, you know, I can like understand. I, I mean, I can't understand. I can't empathize with it. But after, you know, going that long. Anyways, I won't get into the details about that, but he um, passed this morning peacefully and I'm sure with a couple of his five children with him and of course his sweet loving wife. But this is my favorite picture and the one I was looking at while I was just playing the hymns and crying. <laughs> Just look at that. Just just look at the joy in this man's face. I love you, Patriarch Morgan. I'm so grateful for the gospel because I have literally zero doubts, none whatsoever, that he right now is probably already doing some work quite a bit on the other side. And I will be seeing him again soon. So for now,
I have made this my, this is never going to work out with the phone, but I made that really nice picture, like my lock screen. All right, let's get some reading done. We are in the Book of Mormon, chapter six. So go ahead and pick up your scriptures or get on the church website or some other app if you have another app. Let me open up mine as well in case I want to look at any references. It's going to be easier to look at references, I think. Yes, I do have a newfound LaCroix addiction. I don't know if it's an addiction, addiction, but uh, never enjoyed sparkling water in my entire life. Thought it was the grossest thing ever. And now I just can't live without it. I know I've mentioned that before. <laughs> How is everybody's day today? Did you have a good weekend? Are we so excited and anticipating general conference this Saturday and Sunday? All five sessions for the general audience. I just, I don't even care if there's nothing new. I'm just so excited to hear from, from the apostles and the prophet and the 70 and the, the women leaders. And I'm just, my heart is full. Um, or you can feel free to listen. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for allowing me to kind of share the last couple of hours from the video I just posted to um, after that video is when I had found out to now. Chapter six, Nephi writes of the things of God. I cannot drink or cry when I'm with you guys. This is whatever. Nephi writes of the things of God. His purpose is to persuade men to come unto the God of Abraham and be saved. And now I, Nephi, do not give the genealogy of my fathers in this part of my record, neither at any time shall I give it after upon these plates which I am writing, for it is given in the record which has been kept by my father. Wherefore, I do not write it in this work. For it sufficeth me to say that we are descendants of Joseph. And it mattereth not to me that I am particular to give a full account of all the things of my father, for they cannot be written upon these plates. For I desire the room that I may write of the things of God. For the fullness of mine intent is that I may persuade men to come unto the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and be saved. Wherefore, the things which are pleasing unto the world, I do not write. But the things which are pleasing unto God and unto those who are not of the world. Wherefore, I shall give commandment unto my seed that they shall not occupy these plates with things which are not of worth unto the children of men. So interesting how when you read, that's the end of chapter six. It's so interesting when you read, like, I just hear and like get different things each time. I don't really remember that part about, you know, I mean, it totally makes sense. Don't take up, don't take up space here. My, my children and children's children for things that aren't worth it. Chapter 7, Lehi's sons return to Jerusalem and enlist Ishmael and his household in their cause. Laman and others rebel. <gasps> they rebel? Sorry. <laughs> I'm such a dirt. He's trying to say dork and nerd at the same time. Dirt. Dirt. Such a nerd. Nephi exhorts his brethren to have faith in the Lord. They bind him with cords and plan his destruction. <laughs> he is freed by the power of faith. His brethren ask forgiveness. Lehi and his company offer sacrifice and burnt offerings. Trigger warning for spit. My brother is, I'm the youngest of four. 
my brother closest in age to me or my own, my sibling closest in age to me is, is my brother who's like my best friend. Now we're about a year and a half. So we are, are pretty close. And we were also best friends for a time as children, like super best friends. And then as things happen and boys and people get a little bit older, I don't know around what age I want to say it was around 11. I'm 10 or nine and he's like 11. Ugh, he just, it just, we were not friends anymore. He just, I'm not going to talk about all my sad things. There's no trauma or anything, but okay. Here's the trigger warning. If you need to go past like 30 seconds, my brothers, my sister, because I was the littlest, they would like hold me down. You know, I'd be on my back and they'd be straddling me and they'd like noogie me or whatever, which I did to them too. Uh, but what this one time my brother was like straddling me and he was letting spit like drip as far as it could to then like suck it back up. I should not be sharing this. I feel like this is really going to turn people off like torture me okay because obviously I'm worried that I'm gonna get spit on and that is disgusting to get spit on on my face and I don't think he meant for it to happen but I really don't know and I really don't care so part of the torture ended up being again not sure if it was intentional or not he wasn't able to suck it back up one of the times and he spit on me and that was just that didn't work out for me um so that's they bind him with cords and plan his destruction those are some crazy brothers uh that's that's i i can't say anymore that my brother was torturing me because that is absolutely nothing compared to this um he is freed by the power of faith his brother and asked forgiveness Lehi and his company offer sacrifice and burnt offerings. And now I would that ye and now I would that ye might know that after my father Lehi had met, made an end of prophesying concerning his seed, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto him again, saying that it was not meet for him, Lehi, that he should take his family into the wilderness alone, but that his sons should take daughters to wife that they might raise up seed unto the Lord in the land of promise. And it came to pass that the Lord commanded him that I, Nephi, and my brethren should again return unto the land of Jerusalem and bring down Ishmael and his family into the wilderness. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did again with my brethren go forth into the wilderness to go up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass that we went up unto the house of Ishmael and we did gain favor in the sight of Ishmael, insomuch that we did speak unto him the words of the Lord. And it came to pass that the Lord did soften the heart of Ishmael and also his household, insomuch that they took their journey with us down into the wilderness to the tent of our father. <laughs> I wonder, did, did, they, did all the brothers go? But the Lord commanded him that I, Nephi, and my brethren should, should return. So with this in mind, with this in mind that Laman and Lemuel are going to, and they're going because they want some wifeys to, to join in on this. And I wonder how, maybe that's not like a helpful thought of judging Laman and Lemuel, but I just wonder if they put on a little bit of extra you know, charm and persuasion about their love of God or the commandment to try and help entice them to come on this journey. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh. Like now it's convenient. Now it's convenient to, to act righteous in that moment to try and get some women out there with you. It's so random, I'm sorry. And spec complete speculation. 
And it came to pass that the Lord did soften the heart of Ishmael and also his household in so much that they took their journey with us down into the wilderness to the tent of our father. And it came to pass that as we journeyed in the wilderness, behold, Laman and Lemuel and two of the daughters of Ishmael and the two sons of Ishmael and their families did rebel against us, yea, against me, Nephi and Sam and their father Ishmael and his wife and his three other daughters. And it came to pass in the witch rebellion, they were desirous to return unto the land of Jerusalem. And now I, Nephi, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, therefore I spake unto them, saying, Yea, even unto Laman and unto Lemuel, behold, ye are mine elder brethren, and how is it that ye are so hard in your hearts and so blind in your minds that ye have need that I, your younger brother, should speak unto you, yea, and set an example for you? How is it that ye have not hearkened unto the word of the Lord? How is it that ye have forgotten? I've got that uh, word underlined. Um, that ye have seen an angel of the Lord. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. I know what we know. I know. I know that we know what forgotten means. But I just want to pull up. I'm curious as to if it's just forgotten. Like if there's something bigger there. Okay. So, um, uh, so here we are. How is it that ye have forgotten that ye have seen an angel of the Lord? It takes us to Deuteronomy 4, 9 through 13 in the Old Testament. Only take... Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day, sorry, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together. And I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. I'm sorry, but a voice is more than enough, right? And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And First Nephi chapter 4, verse 3. Now behold, ye know that this is true. And ye also know that an angel hath spoken unto you. Wherefore can ye doubt? Let us go up. The Lord is able to deliver us, even as our fathers, and to destroy Laban, even as the Egyptians. I thought that um, footnote might have more about the emphasis of, oh, forgotten. Mindy, I was thinking the word remembrance, because remember is what, like, I can't use big words. I don't know what an antonym is, but is it an antonym? Okay. Yea, and how is it that ye have forgotten what great things the Lord hath done for us in delivering us out of the hands of Laban, and also that we should obtain the record? Yea, and how is it that ye have forgotten that the Lord is able to do all things according to his will for the children of men, if it so be that they exercise faith in him? Wherefore, let us be faithful to him. And if it so be that we are faithful to him, we shall obtain the land of promise. And ye shall know at some future period that the word of the Lord shall be fulfilled concerning the destruction of Jerusalem. For all things which the Lord hath spoken concerning the destruction of Jerusalem must be fulfilled. For behold, the spirit of the Lord ceaseth soon to strive with them. For behold, they have rejected the prophets and Jeremiah have they cast into prison. Is that taking place around the same time? That's a bigger question than we can get into right now. I'll, I'm interested to know for later. See, I'd pro I would, if I was doing this completely on my own, 
I would probably like take the time in, in my Bible right here to look that up or obviously it's right here, but to like, then go down that path of like going to that reference and then going to another reference and then going to another reference. I like doing that. And Patriarch Morgan also was talking to me one of the times during the visit about doing that. I shared with him my favorite scripture and then was asking him what his favorite scriptures were. And I wrote a little note about something in Doctrine and Covenants. Hopefully I kept that note. I pray I kept that note. I think I have it in my phone. But it was the part in Doctrine and Covenants. I don't know where it is right now, but about this idea that oh, it's not Doctrine and Covenants, that's either about when the earth is celestialized, it will be as glass. And I, I've heard it since, and I'm sure I had heard it prior, but I hadn't. He, he expounded on it, and he also recommended during that visit, I think it was probably around June, that his kind of That his kind of go-to for all things is the, the doctrines of salvation, sermon, sermons and writings of Joseph Fielding Smith, the complete three-volume work. And so I definitely, within the next couple of days after that visit, went and got this. Because if Patriarch Morgan, excuse me, if he recommends that, then I'm going to go get it, even if I've not had a chance to super dive into it yet. I am not excited to go to funerals, but I am so grateful when there is a funeral because it's not that I find closure that, you know, well, now I can close this chapter of my life, but it's just this really specific event for me and for like my personality where for whatever reason, I allow myself to cry and grieve and it, I don't care who's around and I don't care how much I'm, I'm crying and it's like a shared experience, although as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, oh, I'll have to look it up and share it another time. Um, we have that peace and that faith and that hope and that knowledge of eternal families. And man, is that just such a game changer. But there was the piece if you saw in the um first presidency's announcement after the queen the queen of england died uh two weeks ago where it, it quoted part of the scripture of you know we we mourn those who we mourn those who die we mourn those who pass and mourning obviously is a very grieving and mourning is a natural part of life and um when grumpy died my husband's grandfather uh paternal grandfather um it wasn't during covid or anything this was years prior uh we didn't have a funeral and so it just feels like and I know it's oftentimes like the wishes of, of the person. Um, I wish pe people would have those wishes or at least allowance that if the family wants to have, I feel like I'm talking about something controversial right now, but uh, so I apologize because I'm just whatever being myself, but I find it's 
cathartic to be at a funeral and to celebrate their life and to be around people who truly loved them and knew them and are feeling similar at varying degrees because some people, you know, know them just a bit or they know them very deeply or it was a long time, you know, whatever. But there's, I'm sure, a sadness and a, and a, and a grief at a certain level or even if it's someone coming to help with the food, but you feel the spirit. And so it's just this shared experience. And Grumpy, for whatever reason, we didn't do a funeral. And then Nana, Grumpy's um, wife, so my husband's paternal grandmother, no funeral. Um, my sweet grandma June. Um, I'll just say that, you know, we didn't have a funeral for her. And then we did have a funeral for Trisha, Jason's mom, just two years ago because Jason and I were the only family members at all to take care of everything because she was a, a single divorce divorcee and had a, a very um, it was a very unhealthy separation when my husband was a very young child and his little brother when they were very young quite severe um, and then her family her like uh, you know siblings lived in New York and they did come out but um, Jason's brother was completely out of commission on a bender passed out and then um, in the hospital we got him to the hospital after she passed and he didn't even know that she had been in the hospital and that sick. And then we got him well enough after, not we, but like the hospital got him well enough after a day and a half or so of detoxing for Jason and I to drive out there and for Jason to go in and share with his little brother that their mom was gone. Um, he was able to be sober enough and functioning to come to the, like, like the viewing in the memorial or what have you the night before and then and then to come to the beautiful catholic um funeral but she had a funeral because jason and because i'm his spouse and his partner and his support and all the things we decided <laughs> that she's having a funeral and so we made all those arrangements and plans so it was nice to have a little bit of it just feels right like to have an, a funeral it really does it for me and then when Jason's little brother died of alcoholism that following October from their mom who had died in October also it was smack in the kind of be like within six months of COVID he didn't have COVID but so nothing like nothing and that was really hard because that was a grieving process that needed to be like, this, I know this isn't the right word, but like vetted out or expressed. I'm sorry to get off topic on that. Um, let's go back to where we are at. So I have forgotten uh, I know we already went past this part, I'm quite sure, but I see that in my Book of Mormon reading, um, in verse chapter 7, verse 10, 11, and 12, I have forgotten, underlined in red, each of those three times. So I don't remember where we were at, but I'm going to go ahead and, and, and go back to verse 10 and, and try not to get off track anymore. How is it that you have forgotten? that ye have seen an angel of the Lord. Yea, and how, it is it, how is it that ye have forgot, forgotten what great things the Lord hath done for us? 
in delivering us out of the hands of Laban, and also that we should obtain the record. Yea, and how is it that ye have forgotten that the Lord is able to do all things according to his will for the children of men, if it so be that they exercise faith in him? Wherefore, let us be faithful to him. And if it so be that we are faithful to him, we shall obtain the land of promise, and ye shall know at some future period that the word of the Lord shall be fulfilled concerning the destruction of Jerusalem. For all things which the Lord hath spoken concerning the destruction of Jerusalem must be filled, fulfilled, just like all things that the Lord hath spoken of, of these last days and his hastening of his work and the second coming are and will and have been, not all of them, but more than I think we realize, uh, will be fulfilled. Amen, man. Have you guys seen? I've been wanting to, I want to do a video. Um, won't be great like Christian Homestead or some of these others, but I do want to just do like my own little version without too much research, but like, oh my gosh, this, 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 and this, and this are all going on in this day. Like when I look at the news on this day, on like Monday and Tuesday, a enormous amount of major things. And then come just like, the following two or three days, a whole brand new set of these super, super major things. Like it's just crazy. And not to, again, not to like super dig into them, but just, just to chat about them. If you want to chat about them a little bit. For behold, the spirit of the Lord ceaseth soon to strive with them. For behold, they have rejected the prophets and Jeremiah they have cast into prison. That's where we were at. Sorry. And they have sought to take away the life of my father insomuch that they have driven him out of the land. Now, behold, I say unto you that if ye will return into Jerusalem, ye shall also perish with them because they're wanting to go back, right? And now if ye have choice, go up to the land and remember the words which I speak unto you, that if ye go, ye will also perish. For thus the spirit of the Lord constraineth me that I should speak. And it came to pass that when I, Nephi, had spoken these words unto my brethren, they were angry with me. I don't know why they didn't just go back. That's what I talked to my husband about when we read the Book of Mormon a couple years ago. Or I think with my kids. Doesn't matter. If they're angry and they want to go back, like, just go back, <laughs> right? Go back. The, the, the two daughters of Ishmael and you too. And I think there was one or two brother uh, sons of Ishmael. Like, just go. <laughs> get out of there. Mind your business. Go get destroyed. Okay, so they get mad at Nephi, angry. And it came to pass that they did lay their hands upon me for behold, they were exceedingly wroth and they did bind me with cords for they sought to take away my life that they might leave me in the wilderness to be devoured by wild beasts. But it came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord saying, O Lord, according to my faith, which is in thee, wilt thou deliver me from the hands of my brethren? Yea, even give me strength that I may burst these bands with which I am bound. Um, he has faith and he's asking for something in righteousness. So the Lord's going to answer that according to many scriptures in the doctrine and covenants. Not all the time in all the ways we think, but in sometimes it is, you know, pretty quick, especially on the level of faith and also on the level of the righteousness of the request. Of course, according to God's will. Yea, even give me strength. Da, 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 da. And it came to pass that when I had said these words, behold, the bands were loosed from off my hands and feet. And I stood before my brethren and I spake unto them again. Have you had that experience? Share it in the comments. Even if it's, even if it's just really brief. Just say what it was. I prayed to find my jewelry box and found my jewelry box after looking for months or you know just whatever whatever it may be share it with us and I'm sure some of you have much more impactful things than the jewelry box 
And I stood before my brethren and I spake unto them again. And it came to pass that they were angry with me again and sought to lay hands upon me. But behold, one of the daughters of Ishmael, yea, and also her mother, and one of the sons of Ishmael did plead with my brethren insomuch that they did soften their hearts and they did cease striving to take away my life. And it came to pass that they were sorrowful because of their wickedness insomuch that they did bow down before me and did plead with me that I would forgive them of the thing that they had done against me. And it came to pass that I did frankly forgive them all that they had done. And I did exhort them that they would pray unto the Lord their God for forgiveness. And it came to pass that they did so. And after they had done praying unto the Lord, we did again travel on our journey towards the tent of our father. And it came to pass that we did Come down unto the tent of our father. And after I and my brethren and all the house of Ishmael had come down unto the tent of my father, they did give thanks unto the Lord their God, and they did offer sacrifice and burnt offerings unto him. Party time in the wilderness. Two families now? Yeah. All right, chapter eight. Let's see how long chapter eight is. Ooh getting late y'all oh we're gonna read chapter eight and then we're gonna close lehi sees a vision oh this is a... all right we're gonna read this chapter and then maybe put any questions or any comments or points you want in comments um and then we'll kind of revisit maybe for a few minutes before we read nine tomorrow and on uh, because obviously this is an important chapter or we can you know go through it and move on many of us may have a pretty good understanding lehi sees a vision of the tree of life he partakes of its fruit and desires his family to do likewise he sees a rod of iron you know what i feel like this we should end now um so sorry if i got you excited about doing chapter eight but it's not it's not the time. Um, I love you all. Thank you for visiting. If you haven't watched my state conference talk, feel free to do that. I'm so pleased that the spirit was 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 working through me on behalf of what God and Jesus Christ's message they wanted to have to, to many different people who, who felt that spirit and, and could relate to some of those things. <sighs> have a good night. Like, subscribe, share, comment. See you next time. Okay, bye.